following the fires and over 200 years of European occupation, the need for nest boxes in our landscape is critical. We will lose species to extinction across the landscape if we do not do something to replace the natural tree hollows that have been lost. And nest boxes are one easy way that landowners can actually help native wildlife. Nest boxes are man-made structures that basically mimic natural tree hollows. And we have over 300 species that depend on these for shelter, for protection from predators and for breeding. And without which those things can't occur. When you take natural tree hollows out of the system, it can take over a hundred years for a small hollow to develop. And that's a small hollow that's small enough for say a feather tail glider, which is a little tiny animal, not much bigger than this. But it can take over 300 years for a hollow large enough for something like a sulphur crested cockatoo to nest. So that's a very long time to wait when you've lost your original home. In this last year, we've had unprecedented bushfires, as everybody knows. A lot of hollows run through trees, and so hollow bearing trees are more susceptible to fire possibly than non-hollow bearing trees because the fire can get in the centre of them and it can burn away for quite a long length of time. The other thing is that after fires, animals tend not to like using burnt hollows. Um, there is plenty of scientific evidence that they don't even like using burnt logs on the ground. They will not live under them. So we need to actually be aware that the animals have lost enormous amounts of habitat, particularly breeding habitat, so that things cannot continue to exist in some patches of vegetation. So nest boxes can play a crucial role in providing supplementary habitat for many species that are dependent on them. And individual species pick their hollows on their own individual requirements. So they will pick their hollow or their nest box on the size of the entrance hole. They will pick it on the depth of the hollow, so how deep it goes. They will also pick it on the size of the internal cavity and or on the degree of insulation. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're actually selecting a nest box. So you really need to think about what species you're trying to attract and then what its requirements are. There have been numerous papers written about which nest boxes suit which species best. And anyone who has basic woodworking skills can probably make them, but you can also buy them commercially. There are a number of companies that actually make nest boxes. And again, providing you know what species you want the nest box for. You need to put it in a tree that doesn't have existing hollows, to the best of your knowledge. That's just so that you don't get aggression between any existing residents in the tree and new residents that might want to use your nest box. So you need to put your nest box high enough so that the main predators, such as cats, dogs and foxes, can't easily access the box and its residents. So the other thing to be aware of is that your nest box may be attacked or used by native predators. And these can include possums, they can include gliders, they can include pythons and goannas. People tend to get a bit distressed if they have got a nest box and it's been occupied and its occupants have then been attacked by these species. But these species actually play a crucial role within our ecosystems and you're just going to have to see that as a natural process and accept that, that it's just part of nature. And maybe you may need to consider that you need to move your nest box if it happens too regularly. It is advisable that if you get your nest box in a suitable tree, that you monitor it. Most nest boxes the lid opens up on, but it's not really advisable that you do that too often because basically if you do have residents in it and they are using it for breeding or for protection from predators, shelter, then you may actually scare them away from your nest box. They may actually evacuate it as a result of too much human interference because they see humans as predators. So what you need to do is ideally monitor it from the ground. If you go out early in the morning or late in the evening, you can probably see who is coming and going or you can set up a remote camera and you will see who's coming and going. 
There are various mechanisms for attaching nest boxes to trees. The ones you want to avoid is anything that goes right the way around the tree trunk because basically that will, as the tree grows, cause ring barking of the tree, which you don't want to damage the tree. Most nest boxes are designed so that they have battens attached to the back so that you can just basically put a large galvanised coach screw straight into the tree, either top and bottom, and that will work perfectly fine. So the 300 species that are dependent on hollows for which we would encourage landowners to put nest boxes out for. Not only will each of the 300 species benefit, but the entire ecosystem depends on the presence of each one of those 300 species to remain viable into the future.